Hey guys, it's Brandon Miniman from Pocketnow.com. If you're confused about Windows 8 RT and exactly what it does and who it's for, I don't blame you. In this video, we're going to review Windows 8 RT, so let's get to it. Now you might be wondering, why Windows RT? Why didn't Microsoft just make a version of their Windows 8 operating system to work on tablets? Well, that's exactly what they did with RT. You see, Windows 8 works with x86 processors, not ARM processors. ARM processors are the low-power CPUs we find in smartphones and tablets. That would be like the Snapdragon and the Exynos and the Tegra 3, which is what powers the Surface, for example. So by making a new version of the operating system, Microsoft is creating a platform that can run on the Snapdragon and the Tegra 3 and have much better battery life than, for example, an Intel Ivy Bridge notebook or desktop PC. So we get the power savings at the expense of performance, although these ARM processors are getting more and more on par with what we can get on a desktop CP, like the S4 Pro, the Exynos, the new Tegra 3 that's coming out, all have desktop-like performance. But of course, the big downside uh, to RT is that you cannot run applications, pick any application off the internet, Pandora, Spotify, um, AIM that is made to work on x86 chips, it will just not run on Windows 8 RT. Apps need to be rewritten to work in this new environment, which is a downside that we're going to see in a sec. So Windows 8 RT is the tale of two different worlds, neither of which are really that good or, or complete. Uh, so the, the two worlds are here, the Windows 8 Metro environment. Microsoft doesn't like using the word Metro anymore. I thought that was awesome. Now it's just called Windows 8 style. So that's the live tiles. That's the 2D typography-like navigation UI that a lot of people love. It's refreshing, it's fast, it looks awesome, and it makes sense. The second world is the desktop. And when you install or when you turn on your Windows 8 RT tablet, you will have a desktop icon like I do here, and it will dump you in what appears to be the Windows 7 or 8 or whatever version of Windows you're thinking about desktop environment. But it's, it's not. It's totally different. Um, it's kind of like a phantom desktop experience, and I'll show you why. So when you get going on desktop, you'll have five icons to start. You'll have Internet Explorer, which is version 10, which is interesting because there's an internet, if we go back to the Windows 8 style apps, there's an internet here, but they're different browsers. They work a little bit differently, which is strange. In addition to Internet Explorer, you also get File Explorer, Word, PowerPoint and Excel, and I've added these three just because I was kind of experimenting, trying to see if there's any other apps I could install in this desktop environment. The answer is no. For example, let's go into Internet Explorer 10, which by the way has fantastic performance, very smooth performance, and let's go to Spotify. Let's say you get your RT tablet and you think to yourself, there's no Spotify app in the marketplace, the Windows 8 app marketplace. Maybe you can just download it and put it right into your desktop environment. So Spotify.com. Great on-screen keyboard, by the way. If you ever wanted to know what a Windows phone uh, keyboard would feel like on a tablet, this is it. And it's especially apparent in landscape. Actually, let me show you that real quick. Let's open that again. We're going to landscape. Slight delay there. And we open the keyboard. This looks just like Windows Phone 8. And it works very, very well, I should add. So let's go back into the other orientation. Let's close the keyboard. Okay, so here we are on Spotify, and where is the download link? Let's click Get Spotify. Okay, and where's the download button? Here it is, download the Spotify client. Okay, download now. Watch what happens. Down here, so far so good. Uh, do you want to run or save Spotify installer? I'm gonna click Run. Running security scan, and this app can't run on your PC. No apps can run here because these are designed for x86 processors, not ARM processors. Will there be a Spotify version, for example, for ARM processors? Maybe, and it's likely to show up in the Windows 8 app store, so you will be using it in the other environment, which is okay as long as it happens. Uh, right now, there are just so few apps that you can run, especially on the desktop. Now, there are some cool things about having the desktop on your tablet, even though it's not the full desktop. For example, USB support. So here we've got my desktop mouse here and a uh, wireless USB adapter. I'm going to plug it in. And just like Windows does on the desktop, 
it detects and within seconds I've got a mouse pointer and to be honest when you use the desktop on Windows 8 RT a mouse pointer makes a lot more sense because menus are small and not touch friendly a lot of the old Windows 7 UI is still there which isn't a bad thing uh, but the checkboxes are tiny and the tabs are just impossibly difficult to press so having a mouse in this desktop environment is just fantastic and the great thing about the touch cover that comes with the surface is that you get the mouse you get the touchpad right there uh, at your disposal. Now let's plug in something else to this USB drive. I've got a camera over here, just a, a digital camera. I'm going to plug it in if I get it in the right way. There we go, and let's see what happens. Tap to choose what happens with this device. Great USB plug and play support. You can plug in printers and scanners, and it works. Well, not scanners, but printers and mice and USB hard drives and so forth, and it works just like you would imagine. So here we can import photos and videos, open device to view, f to view files, or take no action. So really cool having USB support on a tablet. Now let's talk about these other things we get here. We get File Explorer, which really isn't of much use unless you have a ton of music and a, a ton of videos and so forth that you want to manage with a more advanced File Explorer on your tablet. And then we've got these preview versions of Word and PowerPoint and Excel. And the reason it's a preview is because it's not complete yet. You can see right here it says Preview Edition. You're using a preview of Microsoft Office 2000 R 2013 RT, which means in the near future there will be a final version, so this is not feature complete. But this is, this is Word exactly as you would expect it. You can do everything you can do in, in regular Word. You can highlight like so, and then you can go over here to Home, and you can make it bold, italics, and underline, and so forth. You know how to use Word. Uh, it's, it's more touch-friendly, but it's still not very touch-friendly. Again, this is a UI that you want to use with a mouse. And by the way, when you save, the default save option is actually now to SkyDrive, which is kind of cool. So if we go over to File and Save, as you can see, it saves by default to SkyDrive instead of to your device. So if you want to save it to your device, you can click Computer, have it saved to your desktop, to your documents, and so forth. But we're not going to save here. So here on the desktop, we can do some other Windows-like stuff. We can go to Control Panel, but this is a different Control Panel than the main Control Panel. So down here, I'm going to click on System. If I can get to it, there we go. And this looks familiar, right? This is kind of Windows 7-ish. It was in Windows Vista and all the previous versions. Shows that we're running on an NVIDIA Tegra 3 quad-core CPU with 2 gigs of RAM. It's a 32-bit operating system and so forth. So again, there's familiar parts, but it doesn't work very well with touch-friendliness, nor is it real desktop. That's only in Windows 8 Pro. So that is the first world of the Windows 8 RT operating system. And then the second world, which is really the primary way you're going to be using Windows 8 RT tablets, it's the Windows 8 style Metro look. If you ever wanted there to be a Windows phone tablet UI, this is it. And instead of scrolling up and down like the live tiles on Windows phone, you scroll side to side. And these live tiles have information in them. Some of them, you can turn it on and off, for example, Let's say you don't want to see this, these, these news headlines be updated. So you take the tile, you drag it down a little bit, there are a lot of gestures you have to learn, and you turn live tile off. And now it just says news. And I kind of like that cleaner look here. And now we can scroll to the right and scroll to the left. We can actually zoom out if you have a ton of these, and we can rearrange our groups here. So you can group, and again, there's some gestures you have to get used to. We can move entertainment over here. We can move web over here, or we can rename things. So we take the group, we drag it down, and what we can do is change the name group right there. And we can make new name groups. So you can really organize things the way that you want, and you can also kind of have more symmetry or less symmetry depending on what kind of look you like. So for example, over here, I've got these wide tiles, and then I've got these kind of small tiles, so two and then one, and I kind of like the look of that. Now the way you get apps to this is only one way. You go to the store here. And the store really doesn't have that much stuff right now. You're not going to find Chrome. You're not going to find Instagram. You're not going to find Facebook or Twitter. It's a matter of time, hopefully, until the Windows 8 App Store has all the apps that you use. But you never know. Maybe there will never be a Chrome or a Facebook. There will probably be a Facebook. But there's no guarantee that there will ever be apps that you actually want to use in the Windows 8 RT Store. And as of today, 
uh, we're in late October 2012, there are not enough apps to make this usable. But let me show you some cool apps that I have downloaded. So here I've got, I've got productivity listed here. Here's my mail app, which for some reason does not have unified inbox, but it's got a really great interface. It, it's, it's fast, it has gestures where you can swipe to the side to check off certain different things and multiple actions at one time. Uh, some other apps we've got here, we've got calendar, we've got weather, and these metro style apps, I'm going to call them metro, are quite beautiful. You swipe to the side, you get all kinds of information. It's a little bit laggy here. This is a, has, has some performance issues on the Surface RT, uh, but just beautiful style apps. There's an advertisement, and you can do some really cool stuff with this in terms of multitasking. So if I do a swipe from the left and then back, a swipe to the right and then back left, I get a list, we'll go there in a second, I get a list of all my recently used apps, and I can actually open two at a time. So if I take this, well, you actually have to have an app open. So if I go like this and I open up the, the tray here, and I take Internet Explorer and I kind of bring it over to the side, this app moves over, and now, super cool, I get a little, little uh, web browser over here while I have my email on the right. It's super helpful. This divider doesn't really allow you to precisely divide the screen. It's kind of one out of two, uh, but it's still really cool to have, and it becomes very usable uh, when you are using two apps at one time. And so here I am looking at an email. I can actually read it and I'm browsing the web. And the responsiveness is just, is just fantastic. Now, th another thing you have to keep in mind about Windows 8 RT is all of these gestures. So there are, besides the gestures I just showed you for multitasking, uh, you can swipe all the way back to bring up your previously used apps. And this is super helpful. And it looks great. And it's a great way to multitask. Unfortunately, you can't go back the other way. So you can go back to the previous app, but you can't go forward to the one that you just used which is kind of weird. If you swipe from the right, you will get the charms. So at any point, you can go back to the start screen with the charms. You've got sharing options. You can access devices, settings, and universal search, which actually works quite well and searches a wide variety of things. So down here, we can search Bing. We can search all of the built-in apps that we have here. And of course, we can search the web. Now let's take a look at some of the third-party apps that I've downloaded. And by the way, uh, Facebook and Twitter, these are just web shortcuts. So they're not actually apps. So it's going to twitter.com there, and this Facebook icon goes to facebook.com. And it seems that Facebook and Twitter have Windows 8 style icons that push you down. Whereas Pocket Now, we haven't yet done a Windows 8 style icon, so we get that little fave icon in that small little frame. Now let's talk about some of these built in apps Hulu Plus, Netflix, they all were great. This is the best game that I found for Windows 8 RT. Uh, it was 10 bucks. And you know, 10 bucks isn't that bad of a price to pay for an app if it's console quality, uh, if it provides hours and hours of gameplay. This is an app that probably gives me about five hours of gameplay and the graphics aren't even that good. So this is, like I said, it's a little blurry right now. This is the best app that I found in the Windows 8 App Store that works with Windows 8 RT. And so we're going to do single player, let's do race, let's take a look at the graphics here. We get the kind of quality of games that we get here in the, the Microsoft Windows 8 App Store. Big names for these things. All right, so here we are. And it's not accelerometer controlled, it's controlled with this little joystick. And you know, the, I love the texture of the water, it looks good, but what you're gonna notice is a lot of lag and hesitation. Uh, and again, we paid 10 bucks for this game, keep that in mind. I feel like if you bought this in iOS or an Android, it would be half the price or less. That's a bad precedent that Windows 8 apps, see that lag? Windows 8 apps are going to be more expensive. Just because they're Windows apps, that, that, that's an old model from the past. So this looks pretty good when you're not doing something with a lot of action and the frames drop down. But this is an example of one of the best games that I could find in the Windows 8 app. Got some Turbo Boost. Let's turn that on. Windows 8 App Store, which they need to give a better name. Oh, you gotta hold this in. Alright. Let's go back to the start screen. Uh, music is an awesome feature of Windows 8 and Windows 8 RT. And what it allows you to do is listen to music for free with ads, but you get to listen to any song you want. So it's like Pandora, that's ad supported. Uh, 
But unlike Pandora, you can dial in any artist that you want, and we can use that handy trums bar to bring up the search here. And let's search for, uh, say, Lady Gaga, if I can type. So we've got Lady Gaga, and let's bring that away. We just swipe it off to the side. Found Lady Gaga. Explore artists. We can do Smart DJ. Really awesome music experience. Something you don't get built into uh, Android and iOS. In those operating systems, you got to buy music. Or you download a third-party app like Spotify or RDO that allows you to pay a low monthly fee. And so we've got Lady Gaga, beautiful metro look. Uh, we've got songs, we've got albums, just an awesome, awesome, awesome music experience. And it's around 10 bucks if you want the unlimited service with no advertisements. So two thumbs up for the music experience here uh, in Windows 8 RT and in Windows 8. Another cool part of this is the video experience, which is very much like Google Play, very much like I, uh, the iTunes Store, where you can rent movies for $4.99, sometimes a little bit more. You can download videos and TV shows. The selection isn't as good as the other stores, but it's probably only a matter of time. Microsoft has been building up their catalog a lot because Zune had all those music and movies and TV shows. So again, quality is really good uh, that I found. This is a high-def screen. It'll play 720p. It won't play uh, full 1080p. You'll have to get the Surface 8 Pro or other higher-end tablets in order to do so. Now let's say you want to add some apps to the start screen here. The way you do that is you flick up from the bottom, and that's how you access settings in any app. So let me actually go back to music, and you can see if I flick up from the bottom, I get to see my recently played music and my play controls and open file and so forth. So that is a universal gesture. Uh, so if I do that and I click all apps, I will get every single app that is on the device here, including the ones from the desktop, interestingly. So let's say we want to get Notepad for some reason and you kind of drag it down and you can uh, pin it to the taskbar or unpin it in the desktop, which is weird, kind of going back and forth. Uh, we can pin it to the start screen, which is what we're going to do. Let's go back and see where it went all the way to the end. And then this is weird. You're dumped into the desktop environment. That really is strange. Speaking of the dichotomy between the desktop and the start experience, let's go into the web browser. Uh, and this is the touch-friendly web browser. And it's actually quite impressive. So if we press on the address bar, we get recently used big tiles of apps that we've, or, or websites we've recently gone to. And if we bring that away and we swipe up from the bottom, we get all of our open tabs right now in these beautiful touch-friendly uh, tiles. And something that you can actually do here is you can choose to open this on the desktop. So this is kind of strange. It'll load the page in the other Internet Explorer 10, which is strange, and I don't understand the purpose for that. I would understand a purpose for a similar button, and by the way, it logged me out here, almost as if the desktop and the Windows 8 experience were totally different. Um, I would find it more useful if there was a button to move this page into the more touch-friendly environment of the Windows 8 Internet Explorer. So again, this is very confusing. It doesn't really make that much sense. And then if we flick back, we can open up this browser. And I guess if you really wanted to, you could you could open up uh, <laughs> both browsers at one time. Uh, we could stretch this a little bit. And now what we have is a browser and a browser, but they're the same and yet they're different. One has me logged in and one doesn't. It's confusing and I I, I can't claim to really understand why there are two browsers. So we could probably spend another 20 minutes talking about Windows 8 RT and all of the different apps, but I wanted to spend some time explaining the differences between RT and helping you to understand what it is. Windows 8 RT is two different worlds. A desktop world, which really isn't a desktop world because you can't run desktop apps, and it's a tale of a world where there are Windows 8 beautiful Metro-style apps that look as awesome as you think they do, that feel as nice as they, as they do, but there are so few to choose from right now in the store, and we don't know if that's going to change. It took Windows Phone a very long time uh, to reach the point where most major apps are there. Finally, Windows Phone is there. Will Windows 8 take a year, two years to get there? Will it ever get there because it's unproven and because it's got such competition from iOS and Android? Do developers want to create apps for yet another touch platform? We'll have to see, but if I were to offer a recommendation, it would be to wait. 
on Windows 8 RT apps, wait until the apps catch up, and then go in and look at the hardware out there, uh, because right now it's just not a pretty picture. So let us know what you think about Windows 8 RT. Leave a comment down below. And of course, soon we will have our full review of the Microsoft Surface, which is actually some pretty impressive hardware. Microsoft did a great job with it. If you like this video, please give a thumbs up and thanks for watching. That's it for now.